As winter comes, the colour of the light changes. The valleys fill with mist and the trees stand filled with colourful fruit. The circularity of the seasons, the yearly fruit and the cycles of nature remind us of our mum always telling us as kids that what you give to the world, you get in return. This circularity is so obvious to us now, as we work on the farm and care for so many animals. Whatever you give to animals, it is returned in the most beautiful ways. <laughs> like the love that we give them, and they give straight back to us in the form of snuggles and nibbles. or the care that we provide for them, that they give back to us by caring for the land, eating the weeds and fertilising the soil. It is the food that we give them, that they give back to us by laying eggs or helping the fruit trees thrive with their nourishment. Everything is circular, and what you give, you will get in return. We believe that this is exactly the same for all aspects of life. Sometimes it's obvious, like planting and nourishing a tree that will grow and then nourish us with its fruit. And sometimes it's less obvious, like spending our days pulling weeds and regenerating the land means that the land will give back its beauty, its shelter, and its healing care. This circularity is so important to remember when considering our impact on the earth considering our waste, our consumption, and the footprint we are leaving behind. Our new little goat who just joined the family last week is getting along with everyone. He follows Magnolia everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. You made a friend!
Some of the ways that we work towards having less of a negative impact on the earth and more of a positive one is considering the food that we buy. We bought this bulk buckwheat flour from a farm and it means we can avoid so much waste. It comes in a paper bag and we store it in big recycled buckets. And it makes the yummiest crepes. We eat them with locally grown macadamia paste and honey from bees on the farm. We use our homemade rice milk that we made from rice from a farm nearby. Eating local seasonal food always tastes so good. And it also means that we aren't contributing waste into the world or creating carbon in the transport of the food. This honey is complete with honeycomb from the hive and it tastes so good. <laughs> One of the biggest lessons that we've learned on this journey is the importance of giving more than you take. This of course applies to gardening, picking fruit and caring for animals. But most importantly, we've realized that we must give more to the land than we take. We must care for it in a way that improves and repairs it for generations to come. This seems like an immense task and we've begun with small steps, like trying to live with no waste, growing as much of our own food as possible and gardening and farming in a regenerative way, where we use the help of animals and compost to improve the soil. This is what regenerative living means to us, to try to live in harmony with nature systems and to do our best, not only to preserve nature and be sustainable, but to regenerate and repair. This is the land of the Rakwal and Minjimbil people of the Bunjalung Nation. And these practices of regenerative living, agriculture and permaculture owe their roots and theories to indigenous knowledge. They've been practiced by indigenous people around the world for so many years. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the country that we live on and recognize their continuing connection to the land and waters. We thank them for protecting this rainforest and its ecosystems since time memorial. We're going to pick lots of green papayas. Instead of ripening, they are going mouldy in the rain. So we are picking them green and going to preserve them. We have found that preserving food is such a great way to avoid waste. And we are always experimenting with ferments and preserves. Two. 
When we do have fruit that is overripe or rotten, we don't let it go to waste. The animals love fruit, so there's always someone to give it to. The goats love papayas and guavas. The sheep love kiwis and oranges. The ducks love star fruit, and the chickens love everything. We're going to make a ferment inspired by a Korean kimchi or an Indonesian asinbua. We're adding homegrown turmeric, an immune booster which is important in coming into winter. We made bulk coconut yogurt. We have so many lemons at the moment, so we're always thinking of new ways to preserve them. We're boiling them to make a pulp for a cake. Thai basil propagates so easily. Julia just cuts off the end of a bush and plants it in the soil. We try to save seeds from the previous harvest and propagate them ourselves. We use heritage seeds that are adapted for our climate. She propagated this one a while ago and it already has its own root system.
From the shed studio build, we have leftover floorboards. The floorboards were seconds, so we have lots of leftover small boards with imperfections. We don't want them to go to waste and we need to make a door. But because they are all quite short lengths, we've decided to make a barn door so we can use all the scraps. The goats have discovered this area of small campers, a really bad invasive weed. They love chomping on all the small trees and are regenerating the land and letting the native plants grow back. We are so proud of the work that they do around the farm. We always try to mimic the natural systems on the farm, so we don't buy in fertilizers or soil. Instead, we build compost with our own food waste. We're making an easy compost worm farm for the garden. We got a piece of old stormwater pipe and we are recycling it into something that will help the garden thrive with worms and another place to put our food scraps. This is really easy to build in any size garden and is a great way to avoid putting food scraps into waste. The ducks are always on an adventure to get somewhere. They act like it's urgent to get to the Thai basil bushes as they fly past as fast as they can. We drill holes for the worms to get through, and then we stick it in the ground like a chimney. Then we put our food scraps, lawn clippings and cardboard cuttings in, and it makes a healthy compost that helps to repair soil systems and nurture the veggies. We're so excited by how simple this compost system is, just built from old scraps.
We're also putting in another bigger compost worm farm. We're filling it with the soil of last year's potato harvest. And look, we found some potatoes. The road gutters fill with mulch and soil each time it floods, and this is the perfect soil for the garden. Maggie and Moff have been jumping the fence and leaving their new friend who is too short to make it. As they jump, their big bellies touch the fence as they fly over, and then they run off as fast as they can to the tomato patch. We're tightening the top layer and hoping that they won't be able to get over now. At the end of the day, the cooler air starts coming in, and it's time to light the fire. Our house is made so that the northern sun in the winter warms the floor and radiates heat but on very cool nights we still light the wood fire. We give the chooks any extra food scraps that we have, and ash from the fire. They love dust bobbing in it and it keeps them healthy. Our house's utilities are pretty self-reliant, with solar electricity and water. We collect our own water, and it's one of our favourite jobs walking up to the highest hill to check the level of the water tanks. It's a big long walk, but it's so rewarding. This afternoon there's a rainbow peeking through the avocado tree. The wastewater from the house is processed on the farm and it feeds the fruit trees and paddocks. We understand the importance of keeping any harmful products out of our waste as we can see it going directly into the environment. Thanks for watching. Your support enables us to put more energy into the farm and keep creating. And so much gratitude to our patrons who make this all possible. <laughs>